Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good night's sleep. I hope you're getting geared up for the morning. Um, glad you could come back and, you know, sit with us for a little while. I'm so grateful that you can come. Um, special thanks to Reverend Lord and Oma Hart. They're my pastors and I love them dearly. Thanks so much for the opportunity to talk to you guys a little bit. Who can pray? We're going to talk about who can pray. Father, thank you, our God, that you have come down into the earth that you have sent Jesus into the world, that he has taken away our sins. He has redeemed us from destruction and made it possible that we can communicate with you, Father, as if you're right here with us. Thank you, Lord, that you're omnipresent. You are omnipotent. Thank you, Jesus. Who can pray? You've heard people talk about, well, they're not really religious or I really not into this praying thing or they would say things like well you know I, I don't think this is I don't think that is real you know but I'll tell you this it is very real the Word of God says that he is closer than the very breath that we breathe and there is nothing closer than that the Word of God says in Romans 10 to 10 that anyone can call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. Anyone, which means everyone, can call upon the name of the Lord and we will be saved. Saved not only from death, but saved from hunger, saved from fear, saved from hurt. You will be saved, anyone, which is everyone. Sometimes when we're in a place that is a better station in life, we feel that we might be too important or we occupy a certain class that, well, if I people see me going down to the local assembly, you know, they might think that, you know, I'm like weak or something. So you don't want to do that, even though you're in desperate need of God in your life. The Bible tells us about the centurion. To be a centurion, you couldn't just come off the street and be a regular soldier, no. Centurions had ancestry, had lineage. They family were generals, they were tribunes, they were high Roman officials in the Senate. Centurions were not just people, regular people. They were people of status, people of power, people of position. And Judea was a Roman outpost. It was occupied by Rome. And I'm sure that the you know the people the government of the day was very aware of Jesus you know the religious guy going around and feeding 5,000 people and healing people and raising people from the dead I'm very sure that these Roman centurions and governors would have taken notice and some would have scoffed but this particular centurion it affected him because when his servant got ill and Roman medicine failed he decided to go to Jesus. He was not Judean. He was a Roman citizen. But the word of God says that anyone, everyone, he came to Jesus. And Jesus didn't ask him, well, um, did you go to the synagogue last Sunday? Did you put in the collection plate? Have you fed the poor? Jesus did not take attendance. He immediately decided, I'm going, to go, I'm, I'm going to leave with you now, let's go to your house. But he said, no, Jesus, you, you can't come by me. You know why he said that? Because in his home, there would have been idols of Apollo or Athena or Artemis, gods that they serve, or even an image of Caesar, whom they revered as God. And he knew from the teachings that he had heard that idolaters was not something that Jesus condoned. And he said, Jesus, listen, you don't need to come to my home. 
And while he was speaking to Jesus, another message came and said, Don't worry about it. Your servant has died. To us, that would have been the end. But to Jesus, that was merely a bump in the road. He just needed to cross it over. And he said, Don't worry about it. Because he saw in this centurion something he hadn't seen before. He said, Jesus, listen, I know about authority. You just speak the word, it's going to happen. And Jesus was so amazed by it, what he had heard. All of Judea, his own people, didn't have that level of faith. And he said, don't worry about it. Your servant is healed. And immediately, he was. And it was testified that his servant came back to life. A centurion, a Roman. What about a thief on the cross? He was crucified with two thieves. You know, one of them said, you know, if you be who you are, free yourself and us. And the other one says, have you no shame? We are justly punished. We are criminals. But this man is innocent. He didn't do anything. And he said to Jesus, when you go home, would you remember me? And Jesus said, you are going to be with me in my father's house. Could you imagine that when Jesus went down and he took the keys of hell, death, and in the grave from the enemy, the very first person to make it into heaven was a former thief? Can you imagine that? Anyone, everyone can come to Jesus. Who can come to him? The word of God says that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sometimes we have plans. Sometimes we have aspirations that we want so much to achieve. But God sometimes allowed us to do that. Because in the past that we don't take, some of our greatest blessings come that way. So fear not. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Everyone can come to Jesus. Let's wait here for a little bit. I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to wait and we're going to come tomorrow we're going to talk about to whom do we pray. So until then, grace and peace.